my name is Catherine Glass, and I'm a postdoc working in Dr. Maureen Hansen's group in the Center for Enervating Neuroimmune Disease at Cornell University. I would like to introduce you to our study on urine metabolomics and exercise, which is published in the International Journal of Molecular Sciences. This study was funded by the National Institutes of Health and by a private donor. At the Center for Enervating Neuroimmune Disease, we are seeking to understand myalgic encephalomyelitis, also known as chronic fatigue syndrome, or MECFS. This disabling illness currently affects an estimated 1.5 to 3 million people in the USA alone and has no effective treatments nor laboratory diagnostic tests. The illness is characterized by a complex symptom constellation including fatigue, orthostatic intolerance, unrefreshing sleep, immune symptoms, light and sound sensitivity, neuroendocrine symptoms, gastrointestinal symptoms, pain, cognitive impairment, and the hallmark symptom which is called post-exertional malaise. Post-exertional malaise is the worsening of fatigue and other symptoms following any sort of exertion, whether physical or cognitive. In order to better understand post-exertional malaise on the molecular level, we have conducted a clinical research study where sedentary controls and MECFS patients have performed a cardiopulmonary exercise test. For this pilot study, urine samples were collected from 8 controls and 10 patients, first at baseline, which is the morning of the exercise challenge, and then 24 hours post-exercise. All study participants were female. The urine samples were sent to Metabolon, where 1,403 metabolites were detected using their Precision Metabolomics Liquid Chromatography Tandem Mass Spectrometry platform. To the best of our knowledge, this is the first time the urine metabolome of females has been characterized 24 hours post-exercise, and the first time the urine metabolome of MECFS patients has been investigated after an exercise challenge or with such a large number of compounds. To analyze this data, we used a linear mixed effects model, multiple metabolic pathway enrichment analyses, and pathway topology analysis. We also looked at correlations between the same metabolite measured in urine and plasma before and after exercise. We have previously published the plasma metabolomics results in the journal JCI Insight. One unanticipated result from our study was that the levels of many metabolites increased in urine and controls 24 hours post-exercise, while we did not see any significant changes in the MECFS patients. As shown in the bar graph, 250 compounds were found at increased levels post-exercise and controls compared to baseline, with the linear mixed model and Benjamini and Hochberg false discovery rate correction only five compounds were found to significantly decrease. In the MECFS patients, there were no significant changes after false discovery rate correction, which means that there were not enough changes nor changes of a large enough magnitude post-exercise in the urine metabolome of MECFS patients to be sure that the results are not simply due to random chance. This suggests that the metabolisms of sedentary controls undergo major changes that allow them to recover from exertion, while MECFS patients fail to make similar adaptive responses. This dysfunctional metabolic excretion could be contributing to exercise intolerance in MECFS patients. We are very interested in which compounds are changing differently in MECFS patients and controls after exercise. When we look at the metabolic pathway level throughout the different analyses in our paper, there are many pathways that stand out, and most of them are amino acids and lipids. This word cloud summarizes the metabolic subpathways with the most significant differences between patients and controls, with the size of the words showing the frequency of occurrence in our paper, and the colors representing different frequencies. Please check out the paper to see all the results, including individual metabolites with altered excretion in MECFS patients compared to controls within these pathways. Thank you.